Hey everyone, this is Terry with Sweet Stitch and Embroidering Design. I'm going to show you the interface, the work area on Sew Right, and explain how the icons work on this and give you a brief introduction. This is a very simple program to use, and you uh, will love it. It works a lot like uh, using Word. Most people are used to that. It's like a word processor. I will show you the menu bar. This is the menu bar icons. And there's the menu bar. As we go through here, you see that there's shortcut keys in here like there are in the other programs, so what pro. Like if you want a new document, press the control button and the letter N simultaneously, and you'll uh, get a new window open up. And if there's an alternate option, you know, another shortcut key, it always shows up here. Uh, under edit, this is like your typical editing features for word processing or like if you're used to using Word or WordPerfect. Uh, undo, copy, cut, paste, select all to select everything to edit it. If you uh, want to use a shortcut, it's the same uh, shortcut keys that you typically use anytime you're using any software. Control Z for undo, Control X for cut, Control C for copy, Control V for paste, Control A for select all. You'll see right now that paste is not active and that's because nothing has been copied. If uh, we click this for copy, we just copy this text here and we go back up here to edit. Now we see that paste is active again. So let's go to view and on view we have the toolbar. If you uh, have a check mark in it, it means the toolbar is active. If you uncheck it, See it goes away. Check it and it comes back. We also have an option for a grid. A grid's very useful. And that's on there now. And we can uncheck it. And depending on where you live, you may want to use um, the uh, American uh, measurements or you can use metric. If you click this, it changes it to metric. If you um, go back, Click American, it goes back to the regular inches. Under Tool, you can calibrate your rulers to make sure that everything is set properly. And really, um, you don't have to do that right now. Uh, this just sets it to where uh, it'll line up with an actual ruler on your screen. So let's uncheck that for now. Then Editor Path. This is a nice feature and so uh, right because you can select your editor path to where it will connect with So What Pro. Or if you don't like using So What Pro or don't have it, you can um, set it to connect to Inbird or in Brilliance or another editing software program. Just click editor path. <coughs> a little frog in my throat, allergy season. And you'll see program files. And under here, let's see. SNS computing is where I've got my So What Pro. And then double click the So What Pro folder. And then you see here the shortcut for it. So then I would click So What Pro. And double click or just click open. Now, whenever I save anything in So Write, it will automatically open up then in Sew Up Pro. And then what I can do in Sew Up Pro is I can merge another embroidery design with the text that I create in this program here and then save as an embroidery file. It's really nice the way it works. And in Sew Write, you also um, save a WS, I mean a, a dot SWR file, stands for Sew Write. That's your system file, plus you also save as an embroidery file. And if you own Sew so Up Pro and Sew so Write, when you go into your Sew so Up Pro, as I'm doing right now to show you, you will see that you have an icon for Sew so Write. And that's right here. So I can open Sew so Write to insert uh, more lettering, because that's the other way you can do it. You can have a design open here, and then click the Sew so Write option to insert lettering into this. Uh, document here, this design. Let's switch back to where we're going there for now. We'll show that later. 
and then reduce toolbar icon. Some people don't like their icons really big, so you can make them a lot smaller. Myself, I like them big. And then we have stitch properties. Stitch properties is also a gear on your toolbar here. This little gear here is also stitch properties. You can go to it from here, or you can go to it from here. And most of these icons up here have a corresponding command on the menu bar. Like there's copy, there's paste, there's cut, copy, paste, save, file open. I've got a cat running around on my lap so I'm trying to do this. There's a new page. <laughs> And let's see. <laughs> like I said, this is undo. This is stitch properties. We've also got construction in the background. So they're working on the highway. So if you hear that noise too, a lot of booming, that's what that is. And then this little box here is where we select our fonts. <clears throat> right now, uh, So Right has 66 fonts, and occasionally uh, more will be added. Uh, I think originally this started out with 50 plus fonts and now we're up to 66 and there's a good variety um, you really don't have to buy any fonts uh, depending on how much you do some people don't do a lot some people do more myself I have a lot of fonts I use and then here's wingdings that's great I'll show you how to use those two in just a minute there's old English um, Let's uh, select this text here. We can go up to Edit and select All, or we can do Control A. And then if I click this drop down arrow here for the fonts, I can change it. There we go. This did say Test. There we go. <clears throat> and this side uh, here is our font sizing. So we can change the point size of our fonts here. We can make them as large or as small as we want. And if you don't see a size here that you want, you can actually type it in. Let's uh, select this. Hi everyone. And then click the drop down and 72. We can change, actually that's what the size is right now. Uh, we can manually type in 55 and you can see it changed that but it didn't change anything else because I only have that text selected. This uh, button here, this drop down, this is for line spacing and like I told you this is just like a word processor or an old typewriter depending on how old you are like me. And that controls the spacing between your lines when you're typing lines. And this is your usual uh, formatting uh, commands here that you see in Word, or like I said, Word Perfect, whatever uh, word processing uh, software you're using. Some people use Notepad, but those commands are in just about everything to use. You can bold your text, you can slant it, you can underline it. See, there's the underscore. And this is really cool here because this will just give you an outline. And if you uncheck it, see when you select it, it kind of goes in. When you click it again, it makes it inactive. And we'll do that with the rest of these here. This here is superscript and subscript. This is nice if you're wanting to type, uh, you know, say for instance, uh, 10 degrees, it'll put the degree symbol up to the top. Uh, this command here and this one, this is nice because you don't have to go over here to change your font size. This will uh, make it grow or shrink automatically. And we'll show you right now. There we go. It's growing. And then we'll make it shrink. And as it grows uh, or shrinks, it will automatically compensate on the density for it too. And these little commands here, they're for kerning. What kerning does is sometimes you'll have a font and it'll look like it's too far from the other font. So you can select just these two here maybe. See the T looks like it might be a little bit far from the E. So you can um, select this, uh, kern horizontal or kern vertical, 
what this does is this widens it, the space, or this one um, con con uh, contracts the space. It makes it a little narrower between them. And this one here is kerning above and below. This is nice if you've got lettering on top, if you've got vertical text. Uh, this command here changes your text color. See there's a red on here now, and that shows that it's red. You can change it to a red font. I mean font color. Or you can change it to any color you want. And now I have a dog on my lap, so it's kind of rough trying to do anything here at my house right now. And you can see I just changed it. Like I said, you just highlight your text. You can hold down your left mouse button and drag it. Or you can, like I said, do control A to select all. Or go up here and do select all. And then here's something else nice. This is showing us um, like we're back in Word again. We just uh, go over to these formatting commands. Here's left justification. You can see everything changes. Here's center justification. You can see all of our text is centered up. Right centering. You can insert uh, digitized bullets. Uh, how about that? And if you click the box here again, it'll remove the bullets. And let's select our text again. Let's make it centered just because I'm from a commercial art background and I like to have everything just so. <laughs> so this command here changes your text also. And if you look, we've got up slant, down slant, slant overlap, down slant overlap, arch, arch down, which you know are used a lot. And then you can uh, do a monogramming type of thing here. Three letters. Um, there's a diamond shape. And then uh, let's I select just one word here. This is better with just three letters. Let me put these. Oops. Like I said, I've got a animal on my lap right now, so it's hard to do this. There we go. See the middle letter got larger. Oops. To up slant, we can slant your letters. But you get the idea here. And this little um, icon here that's for symbols. You can insert wingdings or any other symbols that are in here. Uh, these are digitized also because a lot of times you need these little symbols when you're. Doing a border. Here's wing beams. It will insert any of these little shapes here. So we have our happy face. There's four little symbols here. There's music symbols. Let's put some eighth notes in here too. There we go. There's a quarter note. Sixteenth note. There we go. There's some miscellaneous symbols. There's the copyright symbol and there's the registration mark. Those are useful. And then there's your regular paragraph uh, notations. There's some fractions under miscellaneous symbols. Currency symbols. You know, these are always good. And then there's some math and Greek symbols. And the wingdings you may use a lot too because there's a lot of really great symbols in there. The check mark's a good one. I use that a lot. This one. <laughs> and this button here just tells you about SoWrite and it'll give you the registration info. 
this button here, this takes you to the help file. And what this does is, so your cursor has got the little um, question mark attached to it. If you go to this button, for instance, it'll tell you what this is for. The help will pop up for that. See, for paragraph right. If we do this again to, let's say, this, it tells you about the bold. So that gives you an idea. And then if you go down here at the bottom of the screen, you see for help, press F1. Press your F1 key, and that will bring up the complete manual. Well, for some reason, help didn't launch that time. But, uh, I'll speak to Steve about this. For some reason, it's not working on mine. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this is so right, and this is the basic instructions on how to use it. And also, um, we didn't talk about this. If you uh, select your text and you press this little gear, that's your stitch properties, and you can, uh, <coughs> excuse me, there's some settings on here where you can uh, make your density, change the density, you can um, do the fill, you can make it uh, the density on it low, normal, or high. If your stitches are stitching out too tight, just uh, go in here and click low. Usually just leave it at normal. If you add outline, it puts an outline around your text. Sometimes that's not a good idea. And then you can join your threads. That way uh, they don't all stitch separately. And then here's your default on how you want to save your file. I've got mine set for PES. And just click OK. And then if you're finished with it, just go up here and click Save. I'm going to do Save As. And I'm going to make a so right test document or demo. And then click save. And as you see, you've also got the option when you're saving to go into stitch properties and you select your file type. Right now it's saving also as an SWR file because it does that automatically and it will also create a file uh, for the file type that you've got selected there. You can also set your stitch properties here as well right now. So right now, uh, just for giggles, we're going to show you how to do this. Uh, <clears throat> if you're wanting to add an outline, this is where you can add it. You can put a running stitch around your text. You can put a satin stitch around your text. You can define how wide you want the satin stitch. Or you can make it an applique. Right now I'm going to cancel that. Now I'm going to save my demo. Saving my demo. And you see what happened after I saved my demo? Since I created the editor path in So Right, after I save my document, it automatically opens So What Pro. And then in So What Pro, I can go to File, click Merge, and I can merge a design with it. Let's see if I've got any here right on top. You can see I have a lot of files. So here's another one I did one day in So Up Pro. I mean in So Right. So we can just put that up here after we drag it. And then you just save it. And that's all there is to it. And I want to thank everybody for stopping by. And I hope I can help you. Thanks for stopping by and have a good day.